Good morning, everyone. Hey, we had such a great Bible study yesterday, the, uh, the American Falls Bible study. We're working our way through John, and, and man, we're sure taking our time. I wanted to share a couple of takeaways, and while I'm looking this up, oh, it would be so awesome if you would join us. We are trying to have a Bible study where everyone can be comfortable because we do not allow anyone to push or bash any faith, any religion. Our objective is, is just this, to read the words of John and understand what God wanted us to know through John's words. And, and I think we're, we're having some success with that. Yesterday, we uh, began reading at John 1, verse 9 and made our way through verse 18. To me, the biggest takeaway was verse 12. And I'd like to read that to you. It says, But as many as received him, him, that's Jesus, as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. There's two parts to this. The first part is... If we receive him, he gives us the right to become the children of God. So what does that mean? If he gives us a right to become the children of God because we accept him, does that mean we are his children by birth? I would say no, it doesn't, it doesn't say that. It says we have a right to become when we accept and when we believe. And so we were not born his children. We, we are not created as children of God but we have a right to become if we would receive Jesus. And then it goes on and it says, even to those who believe in his name. Now, as we study the word, we, we, we read a little bit and we stop, we talk about it, and then we allow the discussion to take us anywhere that we would like to go as long as we stay on topic. And, and in this case... Our study took us to Romans chapter 4, and it was very interesting to me. It's chapter 4, beginning in verse 3, but before I read this, I want to ask a question. What did Abraham do that made him acceptable before God? What one thing did he do that made him be approved before God? I've asked so many people this very same question, and I always get the same answer. Abraham, when God said, take your son Isaac, take him up onto the mountain, and there kill him, sacrifice him before me, Abraham had the faith and the obedience to do as the Lord commanded. They say that's what, that's what Abraham did that made God approve of him. Well, I don't think so, and neither did Paul. So again, we start in Romans chapter 4, verse 3. And Paul says, for what does the scripture say? Now, what scripture? We're talking about Genesis, Genesis 15, verse 6. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. You see, that's all Abraham did. God made Abraham a promise that he would have a son. And Abraham believed, even though all the evidence said otherwise. Abraham believed God. And because he believed God, because Abraham believed, he was credited with righteousness. Righteousness that he hadn't earned. It was the righteousness that God gave him through grace. And that is what made him acceptable before God. Now, the beautiful thing is that it's not just for him. If we go over to verse 22, it says, Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. Now, not for his sake only was it written that it was credited to him, but for our sake also, to whom it will be credited as those who believe in him. Think about this. The same promise is here for you. If you believe In Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus, if you trust in Jesus, if you surrender your life and your will to him, he will credit you with righteousness and you will be found with the same righteousness that Abraham has today. What a gift. Hey, we're going to continue this Bible study 
every Thursday night at the Willow Bay Baptist Church House in American Falls. We start at 6.30. And if you're not there, well, it's sad for us and it's sad for you. You see, there was a time when Jesus shared a doctrine that was tough for the people, and they, many of the people left him. They stopped following Jesus in that hour. But Jesus said to the twelve, Will you go away also? And Peter gave this most beautiful answer. He said, where else will we go? You have the words of eternal life. You see, that's what our Bible study is all about, eternal life, 